CataractCoach.com. Everything, everywhere, all at once. This tough case needs a FACO, a high-powered torque lens, an extra focus pinhole implant, and DSO. Decime stripping only. Look at the RK cuts here, but also look at 12 and 6 o'clock. Look at the AK, astigmatic keratotomy cuts. Those big cuts that were so close to the visual axis, those are causing a lot of astigmatism. It helped initially. Here's the left eye. Now, left eye, look, has nuclear sclerosis as well. You see the NS there, has the RK cuts. Look, it has all those AK cuts too, those astigmatic cuts. Plus, it has central gutte here. You can see that there on the central endothelium. Here's the topography, a large degree of regular astigmatism, but still looks like a lot of astigmatism. And there is some irregularity in the cornea because of those cuts. And the patient, unfortunately, has a large mesopic pupil, which lets in so much of that aberrated light. So here you can see the central gutte there. Peripheral cornea looks a lot better, so maybe some early fuchs dystrophy here. So making the phaco incision here smart, putting it right between the RK cuts, don't intersect the RK cuts. Getting a nice rexus done here. And then nucleus removal will be next. Take out the cataract, that goes very routinely. That's pretty smooth. And now here's the special lens, a high power toric lens. So a high degree of toric correction there. And you can take a look here, there's the profile of this lens. That's 12 diopters of toric correction. And then spherical equivalent of this lens is 27 diopters. So that's 12 diopters on the corneal plane, which if we extrapolate will obviously be less at the spectacle plane, maybe about 70% of that. Now here's the DSO, about a central four millimeter decime stripping only, being careful not to touch the rest of the corneal endothelium. So nicely done. DSO, decime stripping only, four millimeters or so. Here's the extra focus implant. This is a pinhole implant that was designed by Bruno Tandraje's brother, Claudio Tandraje, both from Belo Horizonte, Brazil. And you can see this is a really neat implant because you can use it with any existing eye well. And it can go in the bag, which now you have two lenses in the bag. Post-op day one, of course, there's some central corneal edema here. That's okay. We're going to be patient. Let this heal up using some rapacidil to help the endothelial cells migrate there to the center. A week later, look, you got the characteristic honeycomb, corneal edema there centrally. There you go. And then let's wait with more time. Give this patient, say, a month or so, right? There you can see there's the pinhole implant, beautifully centered. Three weeks later, wow, look at the cornea is totally clear. Pinhole implants in good position. The torque lens also in good position. Now, you may be wondering, how can you see back there through that opaque pinhole? Let me show you. This is the neat part. Patient sees beautifully, 20, 30. There's the centered up pinhole. And now three months later, everything looks fantastic. You can use infrared light. This uh, pinhole is only opaque to visible light. Infrared light can go right through it. So you can examine the retina, do an OCT scan. You know anything you want here. So again, this patient had phaco plus that high power toric lens plus the intraocular pinhole and DSO, decime stripping only. And wow, what a beautiful result. Patient incredibly happy. Best this patient's seen in the entirety of life. And look at that. What a neat case. So yeah, sometimes you got to do heroic measures. Do everything, everywhere, all at once. Now, this was discussed in our podcast featured yesterday. Podcast from cataractcoach.com, your favorite. You got to check it out. I promise you'll learn so much. A podcast is available everywhere where you find podcast services. I promise you're going to love it.